Hello everyone, this is Shan with VKS, back again with another Guidebook of the Week series. This week I'll be entertaining you all on how you can standardize your stamping process with the use of VKS. Now stamping is a general term used in the manufacturing industry to describe the many different techniques used to form a sheet metal into a desired shape. These techniques include punching, blanking, coining, embossing, flanging, and many other techniques you may be using. Today we'll be looking at a general stamping process which would be valuable for you to look at for any techniques that you may be using on your shop floor. So we'll start off with this work instruction here by clicking on start. And before jumping onto the work instruction, we are prompted by a production information form. So what this is, is that we have this element within our platform where you can create smart forms like these to validate any types of processes. So you can use this to gather data points, uh, to create digital checklists, uh, to, to even capture, let's say, measurements or any other information you would like in order to validate your processes you can use smart forms like this and you can customize your smart form as well. This just gives you the liberty to enjoy that 100% traceability. So here as we have it, I do wanna add that anytime you have a red dot beside a field, it's important that you fill out that field in order to get to the next step. So here we'll just enter a random work order number and all of the other information are preset by the author or the administrator that has created this work instruction. So once that information gets saved, that data gets stored into your productivity reporting. So as you can see here, you have your expected versus your elapsed time. Coming on the bottom right hand corner here, we do have some elements that have been added to our work instruction. Now we do have different types of elements that you can use depending on which work instruction that you're dealing with. But here we have a uh, PDF document that is attached. Now you are open to attaching pictures, videos, or any type of documents that you think would be important for the operator to refer to this document at any time. Now this is a PDF document of the machine. They can refer to this document, let's say they need to look at a specific information on how to power on the machine, or how to shut down the machine, or let's say there's an emergency and they need to look at certain um, instruction, they can always refer to this uh, report here. And we have some other um, elements that we've added. These are all basically all smart forms to validate the processes. Let's say you need to fill out a non-conformance report or job cancellation or uh, contact quality or anything like that. There's all smart forms here. And these smart forms will be opened up throughout the work instruction. So you'll see how that works as well. On the left hand side here, we do have some pictograms. So pictograms can be very interactive and to let the operator know uh, what safety precautions to take or safety measurements they should follow. So here it's important that they should wear a safety glasses and safety gloves before starting the job. And now jumping on to the first step here. Now you can you know create your first step with any type of media as you want, either picture, uh, video. If you don't want to add a picture or video, you can start off with a text step uh, to highlight, you know, any type of instructions or data table or anything like that. For any of your word heavy instruction, you always have the option to add a text step. So our first step is basically an image of our machine, just indicating the title of what type of process it is. Moving on to the next step, it, this indicates our initial settings. You see the operator powering on the machine and you know you are open to identify the different you know functions of the control panel as well if you'd like uh, we just wanted to keep it simple to let the operator know this would be the initial setting moving on to the next step uh, we are prompted by an alert notification so this is another element that we have part of our platform anytime you need to you know uh, alert the operator of a cautionary step or a quality step or whatever it may be this would be very useful to add in your work instruction so here it says make sure the die is firmly placed onto the die set so this would be your stamping operation Here's your die holder, your die set. See how clearly they're identified by arrows and annotations. Uh, so this would be, you know, this wouldn't be easy when you're uh, creating that paper-based documentation. 
Here it just makes it easy because you have a picture in place, which is your main part of the instruction, and then you're highlighting it with minimal text. And then here it says, place the desired die of the ventilation grid onto the die set. So here it's showing how to place the die and to make sure that you firmly place it into the die set. Moving on to the next step, uh, you are inserting a pin of the punch into the nut. So once you're done uh, placing your die, you're moving on working with your punch. But before assembling the punch, you need to make sure that you have the right pin to assemble the punch into. So to validate that you're using the right pin, you can always, again, use a form. So this is the whole point of using a form to validate that, you know, uh, that you have the assurance that everything is in place, uh, they are using the right pin and nothing goes wrong and everything is validated. So here it's asking the serial number of the pin. And if you look at the label and mark it down, that gets saved. And you can always view this under a production report on uh, user by user and how they fill out this information. So moving on to the next step, you're securing the nut tightly into the piston. So as you can see, everything's clearly identified of what is what. And then your second step is essentially you're assembling the desired punch into the corresponding pin. Here's a neat um, annotation that we do have is you can have a curved arrow indicating how to secure the nut. So it's just showing that it's in counterclockwise. So anytime you have any steps like that, you can always use this type of annotation. Moving on to the next step, once you are done placing your punch and your die, uh, you are essentially lowering the piston down manually to the lower part of the tooling. So here's an arrow showing exactly how you can lower this piston. And then you can add multiple images onto your main pictures to involve, um, you know, to, to, to validate your instruction here. So here the next instruction is align the punch to the die until both of them are adjusted at most in order to obtain good cut. So as you can see, it clearly identifies how you can verify that to make sure that it perfectly aligns. So you can add this type of picture in picture annotation if you need to add more instruction and to make it clear to the operator that this is how it should be done. Before moving on to the next step, again, you can add forms like this. If you want to validate that they are perfectly aligned, you can have forms like this. Make sure the punch aligns perfectly with the die. Confirm, they move on to the next stop. Let's say it does not align perfectly. This is where you can contact quality right from where you are uh, or uh, contact an inspector and then uh, report the issue. We'll save that information here. Uh, it moves on to the next step. Now you're using a wrench to tighten the die holder onto the die set so it's in place and it's stationary. Moving on to the next step, here we have different types of annotations. So we have droplets here. So anytime you wanna add like notes uh, to your instruction or you are dealing with operation or you're dealing with a sequence of events or uh, critical dimension or quality check, you can add droplets like these. Now these droplets come in different color to signify different types of situation. Uh, in this case, it's yellow, meaning you're just adding a note to this uh, control panel. So our first note indicates that set upper displacement limit at 20. So you would place it at 20 here. And then the second note signifies that set lower displacement limit at 110. So this would be essentially for your piston displacement and then your third note indicates to set it to automatic mode. So now you're getting ready to initiate your stamping process and you need to make sure that you set your control panel. Moving on to the next step. Uh, now this is a self-inspection uh, report. You want to validate the stock piece that you are placing into the uh, stamping machine. So validate the stock piece 8 by 12 inch stainless steel. 304 SS 16 gauge. So once you validate that, you can confirm, press save, and then make sure that you insert the stock piece that is to be stamped. Now, if you do wanna check for the materials that you would be using in this job or the tools that you would be using, we do have a bill of materials feature. So this can be you know, always accessed throughout the work instruction if you need to look at the list of materials that is needed and its description. 
And here's a list of tools as well. So um, this would be the stamping process that you are moving towards. And then the next step basically uh, tells us to initiate the stamping by pressing down on the metal. So here we have a multiple, you know, uh, media images indicating uh, the steps to initiate the stamping. So here we do have a metal that's part of the machine. And each time you press down on the metal, that's the time, that's the number of times it would press on the stock piece. So as you can see here, we've added droplets to indicate the number of operations that would occur onto this stock piece. So our first operation is grid one, second operation is grid two, third operation is grid three, fourth and fifth. So I also do want to add that you can, other than adding pictures, you are always open to adding videos or GIFs. So this is a clear example uh, on how you can add a GIF here showing an animated version on how the stamping uh, process works as soon as you step down on the pedal for each of the grid. As an, as an alternative, you can also hyperlink a video onto a text. Uh, so this is a, a nice example of how that works. So if you were to click on this text, for example, you'll also see a video on how the stamping uh, is initiated by you pressing on the pedal for each of the grid. So that's pretty neat. And see, these are the different things that you can do uh, within our platform. Now we do have a quality inspection report that would pop up every uh, three to five minutes, depending on you know what time uh, you put it at. We put it for every three minutes. So every three minutes, this quality inspection report would pop up. Uh, so this is to verify the ventilation grid, which is the finished part is free of any defects or surface imperfection. So again, you have instructions like uh, no damage, no tear or no wear. That's a pass. Make sure there are five grids. That's a pass. And you do have the option, you know, you, the inspector can create these types of forms uh, to make sure you take a picture uh, to validate, you know, if there's, there's that there's free of defects, that there are five grids. So you can create different layouts like these. Uh, you can have an identification supervisor sign off as well. Uh, note how, you know, two of these have red dots and then these don't. So it's optional uh, to take these pictures, but you can all also make it mandatory by uh, having it required. So we'll save that information. And again, this information gets stored into a production report, which you can always access. And then once you are done all the five grids, it goes on to the next step. So we will fill out this quality inspection form and it will go on to the last step, which is your finished part. So that would be your cycle one. So let's say, you know, you are trying to produce 50 units, of course. So you want to go on to your second cycle. Note how it skips over all of these steps from one to nine. The reason is, is because they are setup steps. So you can choose to have your setup steps and your production steps. So this is an S, which signifies setup steps, and P for production steps. So since we only have one step as our production step, which is the step that initiates the stamping process, on your second cycle, it will only land on the production step and skip over all of the setup steps since all of those steps are steps that you only do once. So that's what's neat with our uh, platform. Again, there's a lot of neat features and elements that you can uh, kind of go through uh, by creating uh, this type of work instruction. And again, if you go through this step again, uh, grid one, grid two, and that's the amount of times it would stamp on the stock piece. And then, you know, you have your second unit. So it would keep on going till you are uh, done your 50 units and then it would close the work instruction. And like I said, you would have your quality inspection report pop up every, uh, let's say, three or five minutes, whichever you choose to have it to pop up. So that's essentially a uh, rundown of a stamping process uh, guidebook of the week. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, please make sure to subscribe and like this video for more interesting guidebook of the week. 
videos. And if you need to learn more or if you want a book, a demo to learn how you can standardize your process, please don't hesitate to visit our website at bksapp.com today or contact your BKS customer service representative and tune in for more uh, guidebook of the week video. Till then, I'll see you all next time.